And then let's do the big screen where it's the two of these. And then if it's okay with you, um, we'll also be recording just for YouTube, just like a sure, yeah, yeah. video. Let me put it side by side. Okay, that's perfect. All right, um, so we're recording. Here we go. Well, hello, hello, guys. You're listening to Beauty Bites with Dr. K, Secrets of a Plastic Surgeon. And today on the podcast, I'm very excited to teach you guys all about red light therapy. And I'm going to interview the founder of BioLite, so Dr. Michael Belkowski. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Kay. Appreciate it. Yeah, tell us a little bit about your background and uh, what brought you into the red light world. Sure. So I'm a practicing uh, physical therapist. I have my own practice in Missoula, Montana, um, where I provide uh, a variety of kind of unique treatments uh, relative to physical therapy. So what I specialize in is dry needling, cupping, blood flow restriction training. And then earlier this year, I added hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So really what I'm looking for is to provide any sort of treatment that will um, give my patients, you know, the quickest results, you know, real results. Um, and so really that's where I stumbled upon red light therapies. I'm constantly reading. I'm just a voracious learner and reader. And so when I was looking through books, Amazon suggested this red light therapy book. So got it, read it. And the information was very um, interesting. A lot of parallels with dry needling in the sense that they both reduce inflammation and improve circulation. And if there's one thing I learned- What's what dry needling is? I don't even know what that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just gonna say the one thing I learned, if anything from the dry needling course, is that almost all pain, there's some sort of combination of too much inflammation, which is sensitizing the nerves, meaning it takes less of a stimulus to send a pain signal to your brain. So if we can reduce the inflammation and then quote unquote sensitize your nerves, then we can normalize uh, the pain threshold. So, um, and then same thing with circulation. If your muscles are too tight, your nerves aren't getting enough oxygen or, or blood flow, they're gonna be more likely to send pain signals to your brain. So again, if we can reverse the inflammation and improve the circulation, we're gonna get a lot of uh, pain relief You know, for dry needling. Mm -hmm. And so dry needling, is you use the exact same type of needles as you would with acupuncture, but the treatment philosophy is completely different. Um, I guess from a treatment perspective, the needles go much deeper, you know, compared to acupuncture. Acupuncture is quite superficial, mm -hmm. uh, don't really go into the muscles much, I believe. Whereas with dry needling, I'll go all the way to the bone um, yeah. with almost every needle, which sounds, which sounds terrible, but, um, not that you're not going to you're not going to feel that much unless you have an issue so if you have a healthy tissue and you don't really have any problems sometimes you might not even feel the needle but it's when your uh, tissue is not healthy you have a lot of inflammation or tight tight muscles poor circulation that it, you're going to get these intense dull achy sensations but it's those dull achy sensations that are telling your body that you need this and it's going to lead to relief mm -hmm. so Again, this whole dry needling uh, um, is what people really come to see me for in for my physical therapy practice. And reading about uh, red light therapy, same mechanisms, you're reducing inflammation, you're improving circulation. So you're gonna get all these amazing health benefits, but also on top of that, red light therapy is specifically stimulating your mitochondria. And also, you know, what the research has you know, shown in the last five or so years, is that our mitochondria, um, the health and the ability for it to function really determines our overall health and wellness and longevity. So if you have something as simple as light, red and near infrared light, that can optimize the health and functioning of your mitochondria, that's why it can lead to all these amazing benefits from hair health, skin health, um, athletic performance, sleep, reduce anxiety, depression, um, heart health, joint health, bone health. I mean, it goes on and on and on because there's literally mitochondria, thousands and thousands of mitochondria in every single cell of our body, except for red blood cells. So the point being, um, every one of our cells can benefit from red light therapy, you know, outside of red blood cells, which is why it can lead to all these amazing benefits. So literally it affects every single organ system in our body, as you said. 100%. Yeah, so red light has been proven is scientifically proven to improve hair health, 
um, to take dormant cells and wake them up and put them into active states. And it's great yep. for your skin, it's great for sleep. Um, so how does a consumer know exactly what type of red light therapy to get? Because you can go on Amazon and Alibaba and be sold like a red light face mask, which could be crap with yeah. the wrong wavelength of light or even damaging wavelengths. So how would you advise consumers like what's the right wavelength and how do you know you're getting it? So currently the research is showing, you know, the most optimal wavelengths in the red is 660 nanometers near infrared is 850 nanometers. Um, and so really all of the main companies, they've got that locked in, they've got the correct wavelengths. Um, at the same time though, red is red is red, meaning as long as it's in the red spectrum, your mitochondria are gonna respond to that. As long as it's in the near infrared spectrum, your mitochondria are gonna respond to that. So while those wavelengths are probably the most optimal, you're likely gonna benefit from anything within um, those two spectra. Uh, another thing, like one of the more important things to consider, because this is where the variants start to come in from company to company, product to product, is um, the light irradiance, or really the power of the light, and that's going to determine how well the light can penetrate into your tissue. Also, for people who are buying smaller devices, the light irradiance is very important because if you have a higher light irradiance, more power from the light, it allows you to stand further back from the device, which allows the light to spread so you can cover more of your body at once without sacrificing light power or light penetration. And especially if you're treating anything deeper than the skin, which is gonna um, necessitate near infrared because red only treats the skin layer. It doesn't get deeper than the skin, whereas near infrared penetrates up to two inches into the body. Um, the light irradiance is very important because if you're treating the bone or the joints or even the muscles, heart, any organs, you need something that's powerful enough to you know, penetrate deep enough to stimulate those cells and those organs. So the light irradiance is very important. Um, most of the main larger companies have above uh, 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared. That's, that's kind of the label there. Um, some of them are up to 125. Our newer devices are up to 150. So again, if you're closer, you're gonna get better penetration depth, but again, it allows you to be farther away, allow the light to spread. So it makes your um, treatments more efficient if you're trying to do your whole body or just different spot treatments. And then secondly is kind of the safety specifications, which is paramount if you're gonna invest in a health and wellness product. And so the two main ones that you wanna look at for health or um, for safety would be the light flicker and then the EMF emission. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, we can get into that quickly too, if you want. Light flicker, as far as I've seen on the market, no other company's taken this into consideration. And just like you and I are looking onto our computer screens and all of us are looking on TVs and iPads and phones, you know, all of these pieces of technology have a flicker rate and it's so high that our um, naked eye can't perceive it, but our eyes and our brain can, you know, at a very deep level. And a high flicker rate is bad for your eyes because over time it's going to cause eye strain just like people who work under fluorescent lights you might even have that visible flicker which is even more detrimental but the light flicker is going to lead to eye strain and eye issues over time and that's kind of the thing about light flicker is you might not perceive it right away it's an insidious issue it's not going to show up maybe for months or even years um, afterward but again um the more you expose yourself to light flicker, the more likely you're gonna give yourself eye strain, fatigue, and that's where it gets into the brain is headaches, uh, migraines, and then even mood or behavioral disorders is shown with um, constant exposure to light flicker. So our pan, which is one, which is one, Sorry, which is one flicker your, per second. Say that one more time, I lost your audio. Um, the audio broke which, up. Uh, which part? You were about to say, so our light panel. But before you do that, we're going to get a quick Instagram video. So I'm just going to hold up. Go for it. Yeah. I light. And <laughs> we're podcasting this morning, learning all about BioLight and red light therapy. It feels amazing, but learn about the health benefits from interviewing the founder of BioLight, Michael Belkowski. Cool. Did you want to get a shot with him and say hi? Okay, say hey. Hey guys, how's it going? Dr. Mike Belkowski here of Violite. Cool. Okay, so you were starting with, so our panel, 
Yeah, so, so our panels have a flicker rate of one hertz, which is one flicker per second. Most of the other devices on the market have 40 to 60 hertz up to 100 hertz. So you can imagine that much flicker uh, per second is significantly higher than the one hertz that we have. So that's a big one to take into consideration. If you're looking to look on other websites, like you said, Alibaba or these other red light therapy companies, they don't even have light flicker listed in the specs because they probably haven't even taken it into consideration yet. And then another one is EMF emission, which most people may be familiar with from all the, uh, you know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, internet, you know, cell phone, all that stuff, which is, again, we're inundating our bodies with this modern lifestyle, new technology, which is great, but um, it does come at a certain sacrifice to our, our bodies at the cellular level with all this EMF emission. And so it perplexed me that some of these, you know, more popular red light therapy companies are integrating Bluetooth and Wi-Fi into their red light therapy panels. Um, yeah. They have their own reasons, but it seems like, you know, why would you integrate this, you know, negative side effect for your body when you're trying to improve your health and wellness with this red and near infrared light? Um, true. So for the consumer, look for the wavelength of light, the flicker rate, does it emit EMF? Yep. And, um, you know, the credibility of the company, of course. Yeah. And um, but with, with this device, for those of you listening, I'm, I'm holding my red light on my face right now. It feels very soothing, actually. When you turn it on, you almost feel like you're basking in the glow of the sun. Yeah. Um, it's quite bright. Would you be able to, like, hold this and do work, you think? <laughs> sitting at my yeah, sitting at my um, EMF emitting blue blue light computer with red light. Well, that's that's a good point actually. So when I'm working, if I have to be on my computer, especially at night, I will use uh, the product you have, the Shine. I'll put it on the stand and I'll put it right next to uh, my laptop screen, and I'll have the light directed so it's not you know right at my eyes, but it uh -huh. it is going to negate um, the negative effects of blue light, especially at night, because blue light raises your cortisol levels, inhibits your melatonin production. So especially yeah. at night, that's not a good thing to be doing. Mm. So um, the correct way to use your BioLite would be turn it on and kind of bask in the glow of it. How many times would you do that in a day or for how many minutes is necessary to get the health benefits when you're using red light? To get, you know, just for general health and wellness, um, you only need to use it for about, you know, 10 to 20 minutes. If you're really under the weather or recovering from an injury, maybe upwards of 30. Uh, I even have some customers that have told me they've used it, you know, 45 minutes up to an hour if they're recovering from like a major surgery or injury. But in general, you know, 10 to 20 minutes, most days of the week, you're gonna get overall, you know, again, reduced inflammation, improved circulation, optimizing uh, the health of the mitochondria but mm -hmm. if you're going for a specific benefit like we've talked about skin health versus let's say reducing anxiety depression those are two completely different protocols which i think i uh, sent you the ebook that i have developed which is completely based off the current research so for yeah, example that was for amazing. that was very dense with research literature and it's yes. very, very good science behind it but just for example, comparing those two um, protocols, if you're going for anti-aging, you know, reduced wrinkles, just overall skin health, improving, you know, collagen and elastin production, um, you want red light only, because again, red light's not going to penetrate any deeper than the skin. It treats just the skin layer. Um, you'd want that at about 12 to 18 inches away and do that for uh, one to three minutes. So very low dosage. Mm -hmm. Compare that to reducing anxiety, depression, you want near infrared only because it penetrates deeper, put it up towards your skull. Um, and the research shows that the right frontal lobe may be more beneficial, but then you want that at about six inches away, do that for seven to 10 minutes. So if you're going for those two different health and wellness benefits, you can see how the protocols can vary greatly. And for depression and anxiety, that would improve blood flow to your brain and exactly. um, reduce reactive oxygen species. And you actually get enhanced serotonin which is great for your depression patients and increase yep. uh, decreases your nitric oxide, which is, you know, a negative reactive ion. So exactly. it's very interesting that it can boost serotonin. So my listeners are definitely interested in skin health and hair health. So talk about um, red light therapy in terms of hair fall, because this pandemic has caused an epidemic oh, yeah. of hair shedding, thinning, 
stress-induced hair fall. So how can we use red light therapy to boost our follicles? So the research is showing that red and near infrared light, some research uses red, some uses near infrared, some use the combination. So I would suggest using the combination. Um, and what red light therapy does is it prolongs the growth phase of you know the uh, hair cycle, hair follicle cycle, and it can potentially even reverse it in um, the stage where it's it's falling out or it's losing its uh, circulation, um, which is keeping it healthy. Mm -hmm. So again, you're going to prolong the health phase, reverse or mitigate uh, the phase where it's falling out, and so. Not only that, but you're improving um, the size of the hair follicle or the, the, the hair itself. So again, it really comes down to what we talked about earlier, earlier which is you're gonna reduce inflammation, which is if you're constantly inflamed, especially around the hair follicles, it's more likely to be brittle, fall out, go into that telogen phase, which is the phase where the hair starts you know, losing its circulation and falling out. And then again, improving circulation, which I think is the big one for hair as well. So, but just by mitigating or reversing those two issues, reducing inflammation, improving circulation, you're not only gonna have more hair, it's gonna be healthier and more robust, and you're gonna have less falling out because it's gonna be keeping that circulation um, and not, not falling out. Yeah, some studies have even shown like up to 20% more hair thickening or growth, but it does, these processes take time. We have to use it for three to four months, I think consistently to see that change in the transition from more less telogen phase and more antigen or growth phase right yeah so everything here's one of those ones that does take longer um whereas you know what one of the one one of the issues that is improved the quickest is skin health which i'm sure your listeners would be glad yeah. to hear but you can see improvements within the first week of using it consistently and with the right dosage um, the kind of things that they notice about their skin um, using it weekly for three or five minutes a day be more plump, more colorful. You might even see a slight reduction like wrinkles or sunspots or these age spots. Um, it's just gonna look more healthy and robust. And so um, cellulite probably take a little longer. Some of these hypertrophic scars, that's gonna take a little longer. And actually hypertrophic scars necessitates near infrared only. That's the only skin issue that you need near infrared just because it's so thick and it requires a little more uh, dosage. But yeah, it doesn't take long to see those, those quick results with skin health. With the skin, you'll get increased collagen synthesis and more fibroblast forming, building a better foundational layer of the skin. And does it improve, would you say, breakouts or pigmentation at all? Oh, uh, what do you mean by pigmentation? Just like color? Yeah, dark spots or, you know, mel excess melasma. So there is research showing it does improve. It's not, the research isn't as robust as, let's say, reducing wrinkles. Um, and then I get a lot of questions about vitiligo. That's another tough one that there's some research showing it may help. There's some case studies, but the research right now isn't as robust, you know, as for me to develop a protocol even. So um, while there may be benefit, uh, that's not like it, its most powerful use. Yeah, I think the best use is the increased circulation to that top layer of the skin. So you do get that more glowy, fresher. Yep. Better, better denser skin so i think that's um impressive for joints and for tendon pain or you know an injury in a joint you'd apply the red light therapy for like 30 minutes and daily or, and that would be enough to see improvements in pain and movement again it depends is it a is it a young person that just sprained their ankle is it a older person with you know chronic osteoarthritis um so it really does depend. I mean, there's such a wide spectrum of how quickly will it treat or how much dosage <clears throat> dosage does it take. Um, but in general, yeah, if you're trying to treat something deeper, something like joint pain, it could take a month or two before you realize benefits. Although I just talked with a customer earlier this week, she had been in a motor vehicle accident and she's the one that's using it upwards of 60 minutes uh, every day if not more and she's got the the restore which is the panel that's about three feet tall mm -hmm. um but she was seeing results right away uh whether it was along her spine headaches migraines um and she had kind of uh a before and after where she was doing a lot of things physical therapy uh medication stuff like this wasn't seeing a lot of results and then she implemented um biolite 
and her pain was like almost instantaneous. She says she couldn't believe it. Same thing with her spine and same thing with some of her joints. So it can be relatively uh, a spontaneous improvement in or reduction in pain. Again, she was on it more quickly, uh, quite uh, right after her injury. Whereas people with chronic OA, that can take, you know, one month, two months, three months before you realize those benefits. But with consistent use, um, you will see improvements. For OA, for everybody listening, osteoarthritis. Um, and then talk a little bit about how you founded this device. This is, you know, fascinating that you're very entrepreneurial as a physical therapist to develop a device and a panel and really put the science behind it. What was that process like? Uh, for me, it was just, again, reading that book, seeing what the research and the potential was for, you know, treating non-invasive, uh, very effective, very safe. And then when I went to see what the market had to offer, it was either very expensive devices that it's like, I don't know if the prices really um, necessitated, you know, based on their quality. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, very cheaply uh, priced products. But then again, you're, you're paying for what you're getting there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, smaller devices, maybe not a lot of power, who knows about the safety. Yeah. So there wasn't really this middle ground of, can we have something that's, you know, more affordable? It's still an investment, but more affordable and higher quality. Mm -hmm. And so that's what How I kind of set out to do a year and a half ago. How did you find a manufacturer to help you build this and design it and make it so cute and portable? It's quite easy to use because I've seen some that are really cumbersome. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't too difficult to, um, you know, hook up with an engineering team that was able to, you know, understand what I was going for, reduced and uh, reduced flicker rate. We don't need Bluetooth Wi-Fi. How can we get the light irradiance up, you know, for more power, for better penetration and all that stuff. So um, it really wasn't, wasn't that difficult to be honest, to, you know, put all these pieces of the puzzle together. Um, the real interesting engineering part, especially with the one you have, the shine is being able to have LEDs that can do both red and near infrared. Cause on our panels, the LEDs can only do one or the other. So you can turn on red and some of the red, you know, bulbs will turn on. And then if you want just near infrared, other bulbs will, will turn on. But the device you have, every single LED has a potential or the capability to do both red and near infrared. Um, so that's some pretty the, slick engineering. What are the specific conditions where you'd use the near infrared only? For near infrared only, um, stuff like the brain, where you have to get deep the brain, joint, bones, because um, you kind of waste energy or a dose to juice in red light, because again, that's only going to stimulate the skin and you don't necessarily want that. An important thing to, rem to understand with red light therapy is um, there's this concept called the biphasic dose response, where it's kind of like a bell curve. And on one side, on the left side, if the dosage is too low, you're not going to get the results you're looking for. On the other side of that bell curve on the right side is where the dosage is too much. And I think that's where most people are because we're in this mentality that more is better, more is better. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of outlined, outlined that in the protocol ebook I developed. So that's why I developed the protocols because I think some people are going to be surprised at how little um, or how short of a you know duration that they have to treat. But it's all about the light dosage or joules of energy your body's absorbing. And so if you're trying to treat the brain or the joints or the bone, you don't want to waste joules of energy on your skin layer when you're trying to treat deeper tissues like that. So um, really anytime you're trying to treat something deep, deep, you want near infrared only. Would you say that you can lose a substantial amount of fat? I know that there are applications for fat loss. It's difficult to lose stubborn fat because fat becomes dense and has poor blood circulation over time and even resistant to insulin. So I think, you know, generating some infrared and near infrared wakes up those fat cells and helps them to start triggering the release of fat. How much fat actually can you expect to lose if you're using this directed near infrared light? I mean, I'm not going to say that this is the end all be all, like you're just going to, you know, shed the fat. Um, if you use it in tandem with exercise, you're going to get a synergistic effect. Whereas if you did just exercise or just red light, the results aren't going to be nearly, you know, it's beneficial, but synergistically it works very well. 
like yeah. you alluded to, the fat cells typically don't have good circulation. Um, so being able to liberate it, get better circulation, get it into the bloodstream, use it as energy. Um, that's where the near infrared really comes into play. Have you seen any like really awesome you know, treatments where you have that one patch of stubborn resistant fat that can slim down a bit? Or is it no, not specifically. Better? And I don't really know if you can spot treat even with red or near infrared light. Um, again, there's some anecdotal or there's some case studies where, you know, potentially that's the case. Um, but I, I don't, I, I wouldn't go as far as to say is do red light therapy for spot fat reduction. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this red light therapy has so many future applications. Can you think of, let me say that again. Can you think of um, future applications that are going to hopefully be discovered? The, I know that, for example, autoimmune thyroid disease benefits from red light therapy. Is there research on the forefront that um, is exciting? Well, you know, outside of these types of devices, implantable devices like um, near infrared specifically to treat uh, issues that are deeper in the brain, like near the hippocampus, uh, the brain stem, because the devices that I offer, while they have high light irradiance, they're not going to penetrate deep enough to get you know close to the brainstem or or those uh, t uh, tissues deeper in the brain. So that's a pretty interesting uh, place on the on the horizon potentially. And then ingestibles I've seen where yeah. you ingest a capsule, so that light travels all through your your stomach and your intestines um, cool. for various benefits that way. And it gets pooped out hopefully yep yep <laughs> like, yep well, like <laughs> monoscopy pills that travel through you with a camera so same thing like gives you that healthy glow on the inside that's such exactly a actually i wonder what that would do for irritable bowel patients and colitis i bet that would be so healing actually absolutely because again you're going to improve the energy production that's another thing we haven't talked about but improving the energy production which allows you to carry out just cellular functions but then regenerate build uh, and then just be more resilient when you have these stresses put upon you, whether it's immune system or, or mental physical stress. It's so interesting. I spoke to one other um, person who's interested in light therapy and he, he spoke about the body is having our mitochondria are almost the same as, you know, in plants, how you have your photosynthesis ability. It's almost like humans photosynthesize and respond to light in the same way that plants do uh, with chlorophyll. What do you think about that idea? Well, absolutely. I mean, I have no doubt about that. Um, whereas plants are in the ground, they're constantly, um, you know, tied into the magnetic flux of uh, the earth. We're walking on top of it. So that's where this concept of grounding, you know, walking around barefoot, being out in nature is super important for us. And then, of course, getting the correct light exposure. Um, so whereas plants don't require as much quote unquote food. They can, you know, create their own food from light because they're always tied into the magnetic flux. We require more food, which ultimately is another source of light, you know, just electrons. That's all that food is, is electrons. That's all light is, it's electrons. And so, um, whereas we can't photosynthesize to the degree that plants can, absolutely that we create energy. And if we get the correct amount of light exposure, you could argue that you would require less food. You could eat less food and be perfectly fine because you're getting more light and energy from natural sunlight. Yeah, it's so interesting. The evolutionary process has probably given us that little internal battery that needs charging with our mitochondria. Yeah. Um, well, it's so fascinating talking to you and I, I'm hoping all of my patients and listeners out there are gonna try some red light therapy. I personally love it and I use it for hair and love it for the skin. I'm enjoying using your BioLite. Um, I think it's such a convenient and easy to use device. It's something we should all incorporate into our regimens. So thanks so much for joining us today. Where can our clients and listeners find you if they're interested to find out more about BioLite and Red Light? Yeah, so our website is uh, www.biolite.shop. Um, our most active social media is on Instagram, which is biolite.shop. So we post a lot of just red light therapy information, education, you know, product information. Um, and I'm always scouring the research, you know, on a pretty regular basis. So I'm always reporting on what's the newest, greatest, you know, piece of research on red light therapy, whether it's, you know, 
uh, purporting it, you know, good things or saying, hey, red light therapy does not work for this. So I think it's just important right now in the relatively early stages of red light therapy, you know, coming to the public awareness that it's education, people understand what they can use it for, how it's useful. And like you said, um, everyone can benef benefit from it in some way because red light therapy has so many potential uses. Ex excellent. Um, I encourage all you guys to check this out. This is technology that is really easy to use and is definitely life-changing. It's photobiomodulation. It's a fancy way of saying turning on your, <laughs> and your energy. And um, if you use the right wavelength, you're going to glow. Um, that's it for now, guys. Don't forget to find me on my Instagram, doing amazing things with peaceful peoples. Let me say that again. Sorry. That's it for now, guys. Don't forget to find me on my Instagram doing amazing things with people's faces at Beauty by Dr. K, D R K A Y. And our website is the same, beautybydrk.com. That's where you can find all of our lovely antioxidant products to help neutralize all those free radicals on top of using your red light. That's it for now, guys. Stay beautiful. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Really, yeah, you bet. Very informative. Um, I think that's Good. fascinating. Uh, I'm enjoying using the device a lot. You made Good. it so easy. Like, yeah, I just manufactured it. It's like <laughs> really, forever to get engineers and the packaging and like, it's very easy. Right. Like, I like yeah. What do you think of these infrared tents that I see people sitting in? Oh yeah, those are wonderful. And they're, that would have been interesting to talk about too, but that's a question I get a lot is, uh, what's the difference between infrared saunas and red light therapy? Like, which one should I use? Mm -hmm. And so saunas use typically mid to far infrared, which are longer wavelengths. So they penetrate deeper. So they're, you know, fantastic for detox and sweating and cardiovascular benefits, but those wavelengths don't stimulate the mitochondria, but yeah. near infrared and red light does. So they're two completely separate health and wellness benefits. It's like apples and oranges. You don't want to choose one of them. You want, you want to utilize both if you can. So, I mean, I have, I have a barrel sauna, you know, outside here where I live. Um, so I use the, inf or not the infrared, it's uh, runs on electric heat, but um, I use a sauna as much as I can, especially during the winter up here in Montana. <laughs> you look like you're very rustic out there. But, so what else do you do in terms of biohacking? So you talked about grounding. I love that idea of grounding and I do that quite often just whenever I'm home. Yeah. Out in the garden. What? Yeah, I live out here right uh, on the river. Um, so every morning that I can, I get outside as the sun's coming up from, you know, the sunrise barefoot looking towards the sun. Um, same thing in the evening if I can. So I'm just as consistent with those two things as possible. Uh, I do take some supplements, but I'm not as big or dependent on them as I used to be. Uh, the more I read, the more I learn, the greater respect I really have for the power of light. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Dr. Jack Cruz. Mm -mm. He is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to light. And so he's one proponent. Um, he has a lot of podcasts that he's been interviewed on, but he's one proponent that he doesn't really care what you eat. He doesn't care about your diet. As long as you have your light environment, correct. That's, that's what needs to be optimized. Not, not your diet. Um, hmm. so he's a pretty interesting cat, but other biohacks, so I mean blue blockers, um, red light therapy, the hyperbaric chamber, which I recently got um, from my practice. But again, it ha that has a myriad of health and wellness benefits too. Are you using um, that intermittent yourself? Fasting. Do you do hyperbaric yeah. therapy yourself? You do? How yep. Um, it kind of ebbs and flows anywhere from one to three or four times a week, like a 60 minute session. And I typically do it with my mom because um, she's been dealing with a lot of health issues. She was a pharmacist, so she was constantly inundated with blue light basement. So like never out in the environment, right under the radiation room. So for 37 years in a hospital, she was just surrounded by a very poor environment. And then she's having all this dental work done to remove mercury amalgams and all that stuff. So she's been working with a holistic dentist. So I've been getting her in her in the hyperbaric as much as possible and you can fit two people in there comfortably. So whenever she's doing it, I just do it with her. Um, is that not bad to generate so much reactive oxygen species? And I don't know what I've heard mixed reviews about hyperbaric. Yeah. 
I mean, to be in that high density of oxygen for over so much time, isn't that oxidative damage eventually going to build up? Not that I've read, at least in the research or the book that I have. Um, you know, like they talk about premature babies getting retinopathy because they're getting high flow oxygen for a long time. And it's, uh, it's you know, oxygen is able to oxidize. Just curious. I mean, I, love I, mean if, I mean, if you were in, if you slept in there, like some people do, um, the short term, or if you're in there for two to three to four hours, like every single day, but from what I've read, like doing an hour session almost daily is quite beneficial. Hmm. It's an anti-aging, you know, biohack. Yeah. Um, so that's just from what I read, but I, I understand what you're saying as well. Kind of like along the lines of red light therapy where if you do it way too much way too often and you're building all this you know generating all this atp production well uh, a, a side effect of atp production is ros production too so of mm -hmm. course you don't want too much of that mm -hmm. um but from what i've read as far as hyperbaric the way especially my mom or my i'm doing it with patients patients don't do it that frequently um, yeah that's true you know what i mean yeah, and you do intermittent fasting. Are you doing like cold water plunges or anything? Oh yeah, that river out there. I, I'll do it in the middle of December, January, which my wife thinks I'm crazy, which I probably am, but um, <laughs> I'll do that for, when I started, I couldn't do it for 15 seconds, of course, because that's- That's really cold. Water, Long yeah, it, that's runoff from the mountains over here. So, um, but then, then I got to the point a couple of months later where I could do it for two or three minutes, you know, up to my neck. Um, oh. So yeah, cold water immersion. Um, what else? Oh, and back to the hyperbaric. For a lot of things, if you're trying to treat, especially like concussions, Alzheimer's, because it's really good for the brain. Yeah. You want to do at least 40 sessions before you see real results. And from what I've read, if you continue to see results, you continue to do it. Mm -hmm. So in the books or whatever I've been reading, people are doing 40 sessions, 60, 80, 100 sessions, or they'll do it over the span of two, three, four, five years. Well, they'll, they'll just keep doing it because they keep seeing benefits. Hmm. Um, but again, that's a good point about the reactive oxygen species. Yeah, I mean, you talk about like cancer and tumor cells growing faster in the presence of high oxygen. And I don't know. I just ask because I'm trying to learn for my own self. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But um, any supplements that you think are essential are you doing turmeric, vitamin C. Yeah. That's my big one is like curcumin, curcumin and a uh, couple of supplements from Quicksilver that are kind of mito mitochondrial focused. Um, um, so the big one is one's like an amp K and then one is called the one, which is for the mitochondria. So it has like re resveratrol, uh, quercetin, um, stuff like that. And, and What's another one I seen maybe. Oh, astaxanthin's every single day. So those are the yeah. big ones. He yeah, has the curcumin, astaxanthin, um, one with all these organs in it, you know, like spleen, kidney, liver, heart, mm. um, and then spirulina, mm. kind of like along the lines. There's actually research showing if humans consume more greens and so they're able to obtain more chlorophyll, you're actually able to capture more light energy, just like a plant. Oh, really? Why eat the, so it's like, why the organ one? with the liver and the um because you're just getting all these micro nutrients because even if you're eating a, a vegetable rich or a plant rich diet especially with the soil the modern day soil it's lacking so many of these micro nutrients that um stuff especially like the liver and and the spleen are just very micronutrient dense that you can't get from eating even like pounds and pounds of vegetables every day so it's just kind of a um, a hack. And I got that from Ben Greenfield, if you're familiar with him. Um, I am going to interview him. Eating kind of organs. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Interesting. He yeah. is an absolute wealth of knowledge. That's cool. I love the idea of having spirulina and being more like a plant. Are you plant-based diet? Pretty much. No, not necessarily. I've kind of gone through different iterations as I've read and learned. Years and years ago, I was really into keto. Um, but then listen to Ben Greenfield and others. It's like, that's not the end all be all. You kind of want to go in and out seasonal mm -hmm. eating, kind of eat with the seasons, eat with what's around you. Um, like, why would you eat a banana 
on December 21st if you can't grow I can't like we can't grow bananas in Montana so why would you eat it in the middle of December just it's it's a mismatch to to the biology for where you live so just eating with what's around you seasonally like I said I'll do intermittent fasting so 12 to 15 hours most days I'll have a um, period where I don't eat um how about hormonally? Are you doing anything in terms of like, you know, women maintain men to, are doing testosterone shots or HCG or other things like that? No, I haven't gone to that point yet. Um, or like the peptide thing, you know, there seems to be this big push on, you know, peptides and injectables like that. Um, mm. But no, I mean, it all comes down to me for the light. And really, I've listened to shoot 20, 40 hours of jack cruz again jack cruz is the the dots he connects through science and just through other things is amazing so really that's where i've gone to like minimalist supplements and adju adjuvants and like this external um i guess uh need for things like like that mm -hmm. whereas again the grounding sunlight ct you know uh cryotherapy or um, cold thermogenesis. If you've got those things locked in, there's a less and less need for like these supplements or because um, if you do those things correctly, if you get your environment correct, your hormones and your inflammation and your mitochondria, they're going to be optimized where you shouldn't need that stuff. And you, you should be able to run on your endogenous systems. Um, so that's kind of where I'm headed. It's kind of more of a minimalist you know, get the diet locked in, get the circadian rhythm and sleep locked in, but then get the light environment grounding and water um, in cold thermogenesis locked in. And I think the rest kind of takes care of itself in the long run. Yeah, that's true. Maybe some rare earth minerals or anything like mm -hmm. that. That might be good too, rare earth minerals. Yep. Um, and then blue light or EMF blockers, are you into that? Um, yeah, I actually have like some of these products. Uh, I forget what brand this is, but it's like a hologram chip okay. thing where, uh, apparently this will protect me from EMFs within a 15 foot radius just because of, um, what's the effect called? Uh, yeah, just the light scatter or the, yeah, it's, it's supposed to kind of like scramble the EMFs and kind of match it with my um frequency if you will instead of the emf coming in and destroying it so i have stuff like this around um who makes that one uh oh, shoot what is it called it doesn't even have it on here that's okay i'm curious <laughs> i'm just curious i shouldn't i should know though um oh, that makes me i get emails from them all the time too let me see if i can find it <laughs> If you find it, tech, DM it to me. That would be awesome. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Would you ever do any kind of cosmetic treatment? Botox, or fillers, or facial maintenance? Um, man, I mean, it definitely wouldn't be at the top of my list. I have nothing against it, but it's just like, not right now, or I just don't know if I would have a need. It's not like I'm working in Hollywood or, uh, you know, I'm a model or, or anything where like I'm, I need to. Yeah. I'll keep my face or whatever to that degree, but it's just I'm not against it. No matter, no matter how much we take in good nutrients and whatnot, we're going to get, you know, facial atrophy from fat loss and muscle change, mm -hmm. and osteoporosis and actually bone density change, I think is a huge thing. I, I want to learn more about how the facial skeleton and the skeleton in general remodels. So, um, yeah, definitely. It's interesting. The aging process. Um, I definitely want to send you some of our skincare to try. I don't know what you're using for good skin, but I have an amazing 20% vitamin C serum that's a great for antioxidant protection and yeah. uh, hyaluronic acid serum that's awesome to just replenish moisture. Yeah, definitely. That'd yeah. be amazing. Um, well, send me your address or actually let me write it down since I have you right here and I'll mail you some. It was really fun chatting with you. If you're ever in LA, yeah, you too. visit. What's your um, mailing address? Uh, 3943 uh -huh. Stevensville River Road. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to DM it to you? Sure, but would that, I got it. Would that be easier? 
No, it's okay. I'm writing Stevensville River Road, 3943. Yep, apartment B. Okay. And then Stevensville okay. is the city. Stevensville, Montana. Okay. Got it. Five nine eight seven zero. Okay, perfect. What's your cell number in case I want to text you a question? Yeah, for sure. Four zero six. Uh-huh. Three seven zero. Uh-huh. Four seven four six. Okay, awesome. Well, thank. And you. I do plan to be in LA in the next month or two, because um, I was going to be down there earlier this month to do a podcast with um, Dr. Christian Gonzalez. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's a naturopathic doctor, yeah, I've heard of big him. Instagram in influencer. So I was going to do a podcast with him, but it kind of fell through the cracks. So I'll probably do that either in November or December. So you know, I'll definitely let you know when I'm in the neighborhood. Okay, I love that. Stop by for sure. Yeah, we'll a nice do. facial treatment. <laughs> I'll take you up on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, have a great day. It was really nice chatting with you. You too, Kay. Have a great one. Okay, bye. Bye.